What is going on guys? Thanks for tuning in to yet another video. My name is Anthony Pinto da Costa and you are watching Canadian Physio Student. So as you guys know, in order to get into the vast majority of the physiotherapy programs in Canada, you need a good breadth of experiences in order to make yourself a suitable candidate for admission. And whether they're work or volunteer experiences, you need to be able to say that you have both physio and non-physio related experiences on your resume. With that said, a lot of students don't really know where to go and what experiences to seek out that will one, help them learn the most about the profession, and two, give them the best chance of getting into physiotherapy school, which is why I'm making this video today to share some of my experiences so I can give you guys somewhat of a blueprint on where to go and what experiences to seek out. Quick disclaimer before I share all my experiences, I don't wanna make it seem like whatever I took on during my undergrad, you guys also have to take on. I just wanna share some of mine so that you guys can see what maybe a typical physio student took on before they got into physio school. And secondly, I think the biggest takeaway that you should take from this video is why I chose my experiences and what I learned from each experience because then maybe this can help guide you to picking your experiences down the line. So without further ado, I'll first start off by just listing some of my physio related experience that I took on, why I took them on, and what I learned from each experience. So my first experience was the typical volunteer physiotherapy assistant in a private practice physiotherapy clinic near my house. Um, I took on this experience because at the end of my first year, I was thinking that I maybe wanted to pursue physiotherapy, but I didn't know too much about it. So I thought going into the clinic would teach me exactly what it's all about and what a physio does on a day-to-day -day basis. And what I learned was exactly just that, just learning what a physiotherapist does on a day-to-day -day basis in a private practice environment. I learned all the modalities, I learned how to prescribe exercise to people, and I think my biggest takeaway was that I learned how to communicate with the patients effectively. The next experience I took on was being a physio assistant, this time in a rehab hospital working with spinal cord injury patients. What I would do is I would set up these machines called functional electrical stimulation ergometers on the spinal cord injury patients, and this was just a way that we got them exercising on the ergometer. The reason I took this one on is because one, I wanted to get more exposure and more experience with a neurological population. And then two, I knew physios worked in hospitals, but I had never been exposed to that before. So I just wanted to see uh, what the differences were between a physio in a hospital and a physio in a private practice clinic. And what I gained from this experience was one, working in a multidisciplinary setting. You know, there were so many different disciplines. There were doctors, there were OTs, there were speech paths, there were physios and I saw how they all work together in a team to try and make the best care plan for these patients. And then secondly, like I said, it showed me a physiotherapist's role in treating a patient with a neurological condition. My next physio-related experience was working as a research assistant for a spinal cord injury research team in that same hospital that I was doing my last experience. And what I did for this research team is I looked through patient files and sifted out certain outcome measures that they were looking for for their project, and then took the scores of those outcome measures and then inputted them into an Excel sheet. The main reason I took this on is because I know physiotherapists have a role as a scholarly practitioner, and I wanted to see what the research process was like, as opposed to just consuming it all the time, because I always just consumed it, but I didn't really understand the work that was put into each of these research papers that get published. And what I gained from that was exactly just that, realizing what the research process is like. And then I think most importantly, people may think this is a negative, but I think it's a positive. I realized that I don't want to do research. Um, I do just like consuming the research as opposed to being the person on the front lines who is conducting the research. And this may be because I was a data collector, which is definitely not the most stimulating or exciting job, but just from that experience alone, it didn't really seem like my cup of tea. And then my last physio related experience, which was definitely my favorite one, and something that I dreamed about doing since my first year of undergrad, and that was I was the student athletic trainer for Western's men's basketball team. I pursued this because I've always had it in me to want to work with athletes, 
and what better way to expose myself to the athletic population, especially the acute injuries and acute injury management than working for a varsity basketball team at my university. And I learned a lot from this experience. It really taught me what an athlete's body takes over the course of a season, especially a long season like basketball. And it really made me aware of what I can do to offset some of these physical symptoms. I also learned how to approach an athlete that is injured on the playing field and making sure that I'm doing everything necessary before I actually move this athlete so I don't cause any further damage. And then lastly, it just showed me the basics of a physical assessment, getting your subjective history, doing your objective, and then finally coming up with a plan to manage the athlete's injury. And overall, this experience prepared me the most for physiotherapy school by far. So that's it for my physio-related experiences. Now we can move on to the non-physio-related experiences, which people think are not as important as the physio-related, but like I've mentioned in a previous video, it's definitely just as important. So my first non-physio-related experience was being a coach for athletes who have dwarfism. I coached basketball, volleyball, and soccer for these athletes. And I did this in their tournaments that they have each year in July in a different city in the US. The reason I took on this experience is because I love to coach. I wanted more experience with individuals who are younger. And I also wanted experience with people who may have a physical disability or challenge. As physiotherapists, you never know who's gonna walk through your clinic door. So having a knowledge base of any type of physical disability or challenge and realizing what those people may face in their everyday life will help you adapt to those situations if you ever face them in the clinic. And what I learned from this experience was just seeing exactly what somebody with dwarfism goes through on a daily basis, what they like, what they don't like, and just seeing how important a tournament like that for them is because they're with a bunch of other people who have their same condition and it's, it's just a really nice thing to see uh, throughout the course of that week. And just a quick aside, just because we're on the topic of dwarfism, never say the word midget. The only acceptable terms are dwarf, little person, or you can simply just call them their name. Don't forget that. And my next experience here was being a lecturer for the Concussion Legacy Foundation at Western University. Essentially what I did was I went to local high schools and talked to grade 9s and grade 10s uh, giving about a 40 minute presentation on what a concussion is, how to recognize a concussion, and what you should do if you see a concussion in one of your teammates. The reason I took on this experience is because I wanted to learn more about concussions and I feel like if you can teach about something, you have the utmost understanding of that certain topic. Another reason is because I know that physios do have a huge role in the treatment of concussions, so the more I expose it to myself, I'll have a better understanding when I'm actually treating it in practice. And what I gained from this experience is just having a role as an educator. As physios, there may be a lot of complex things that you know, but when you're explaining it to a patient, you have to say it in terms that is digestible for that patient. And I felt like I was doing that during this experience because I was talking to a bunch of grade nines and tens who may not have the knowledge that I do. So I really had to learn how to uh, talk in layman's terms and give it to them in a digestible manner. And my next non-physio related experience was being a senior fitness instructor assistant for the Victorian Order of Nurses at a local retirement home. And what I did during this experience was I just provided cues and exercise modifications for seniors participating in a group exercise class. And the main reason I took on this experience is because I reflected on all the experience that I already had and I realized I had no work with anybody from a geriatric population. So I wanted to expose myself to geriatrics because I know physios have a huge role in treating the elderly. And what I gained from this experience was just understanding how to dose exercise to frail older adults and just understanding uh, their tolerances and how they may vary from people who are younger than them. And my last non-physio related experience was being a soft also known as an orientation week leader at Western University for the health sciences soft team. And the main reason I took on this experience is because when I was going into first year, I had a really hard time adjusting to the lifestyle, you know, 
know, the workload, just being away from home, all those factors. And my soft and first year really helped me adjust to all that and was really there for me throughout those periods. And because of this, it made me want to take on the exact same role for a first year student who may be coming in with the same concerns and challenges that I had to help them transition smoothly academically and socially into the university lifestyle. And what I gained from this was just strengthening my communication skills and also just strengthening my skills in communicating with somebody who may be vulnerable. And this is super important for a physio as you need to be a leader because you're the one who is leading the client through their care. And a lot of people who come in, they are vulnerable because of their conditions or their injuries. And you really gotta know how to make them feel comfortable while you're providing care to them. So that basically just sums up all of my physio related and non-physio related experiences, as well as telling you guys why I took them on and what I gained from each of them. So guys, if you like this video, make sure to like, share, of course, smash that subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions, whether it be positive or negative, doesn't matter to me, leave them in the comment section down below. I'm open to all of it. If you don't want to do that, you can DM me on my Instagram at CDN Physio Student, and we can also chat from there. So once again, I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope it helps, and I will see you guys at the next video. Another day, another dollar to be made I'm a workaholic, ballin' hard until the grave Used to wanna be a baller for the NBA Till the fellas round me started dunking in the 7th grade